Hey, so today I wanted to go over some information about some electric water pumps I've been using recently. So this is a BMW electric water pump off of many of their new turbo models. It has extremely high flow and it's PWM controllable with a Holley Terminator or Dominator. So I'll show you why I like using them and how to set them up. So first of all, we're going to look at this coolant pump test. This is from Dedicated Motorsports. This is a really great chart put out by them. Basically, this Peerberg 400 or CWA 400 is the pump that we've been using. And this pump, it outflows everything in this test, including the Davies Craig 150, which is a very popular electric water pump. It just loses to the EMP just out here with the higher outlet pressures. Obviously, this pump flows a ton of water at full speed. The other reason I use these, these pumps are very cheap. They're about $90 to $100 used. New, they're about $300 to $400, um, but you can find good used ones from junkyards from these turbo BMW motors. I think it came on the four, six, and sometimes eight cylinder possibly. There's two different models. There's a CWA 400 and a CWA 200. The 400 is what you want. And the way you could tell is that they're gonna be all metal like this. And the plug is going to be a large D shape. And these three bolt holes, are going to be in line like this. The CWA 200 is gonna have two here and then another one in a 90 degree angle approximately. This is the water pump. This is a big block Chevy with a Davies Craig EWP 150 adapter for it. The inlets and outlets of this pump are 40 millimeter, so they're about 1.5 inches. They're a little over 1.5 inches, but as you can see, a 1.5 inch hose slips on nicely. Here's the data sheet for them, Peerberg CWA 400. And you can see right here, here are the other part numbers. These are the three BMW part numbers. The PWM info for the pump, it can run at an input frequency from 50 to 1000 Hertz. And it needs a wake up signal of three milliseconds. And then it would take 13 to 85% duty cycle for min to max speed. Now this is all 12 volt positive PWM. So with the Terminator, we can only pulse ground. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Basically just these duty cycles are gonna be in reverse and we're gonna use a pull-up resistor. This is the wiring diagram for the pump. You obviously you see have four pins, two main power and two PWM pins. And you can get this plug from Ballinger Motorsports. They sell it as a pigtail or just a connector kit. I think they're about 20 to $25. And I'll show you how to wire it now. Here's our wiring diagram. Basically, we have a battery and our terminator and our pump. So you're gonna hook up the battery and pins two and four to ground. So you're gonna give it a 40 amp fuse to pin three. And a 40 amp, that's about 10% higher than the 36 amps that it takes maximum. You could put a 45 or 50 in there, but I've been using 40s and it's worked okay. You're gonna wanna feed this pump with 10 gauge wire or bigger. And you can either have it on battery power all the time. It only draws about 0.2 milliamps in standby mode, or you could put a relay here on keyed ignition or switch ignition. So then pin one here is going to be from your Holly. Any of the gray wires from the Terminator will work. And you're going to tee that in with a 5K ohm resistor to switch to ignition. So that's gonna pull up the Terminator's ground pulse and make it work with the water pumps PWM. Now, like I said earlier, because we're pulsing ground and it needs a 12 volt PWM signal, our settings in the Terminator are going to be backwards. So minimum speed is going to be 87% duty cycle and maximum speed is going to be 15% duty cycle. So now going to the Holly setup, you're going to come into here into your IO. You're going to go to outputs. And I just have this one named CWA 400. That's the name of the electric water pump. Type is going to be PWM ground. Enable it, go into configure. This water pump needs a activation wake up signal. So the data sheet says a three millisecond pulse. So I'm just gonna give it 10 times that. And then we're gonna go into here in our PWM setup. The type is going to be fixed. And this pump can run from 50 to 1000 Hertz. I'm gonna set it at 100. And the table units are gonna be duty cycle. That's what the pump wants to see. For your X and Y axis, you could set this up kind of however you want. You can set it up almost as a 1D table with just your coolant temp. I have it set up for my coolant temp 
and my base fuel flow. If I'm using more fuel, my engine is basically making more heat. So I want to run the pump higher with more fuel flow. And obviously if my coolant tip is higher, I wanna bring that down and I wanna run more pump as well. So 15 is maximum. So if my coolant temp gets to 210 or above, it's gonna run at full speed. And down here at 160 and below, it's gonna be minimum speed. So from you know negative, whatever the coolant temp sensor can read to 160 degrees, I'm gonna be at minimum speed, kind of acting as a thermostat. You can run no thermostat with these pumps, just with the low speed pump control, it works fine. So as you come up into temperature, the pump will increase in speed until it eventually reaches your max coolant temp. And above that, it'll continue to run at full speed. And same thing, you know, down here, 160 low minimum speed, but if we're getting on it and our fuel flow is high, it's gonna be making some heat and it's going to bring up the pump to max speed. Now you can play with these values in your car to see how it works for you, how it works for your particular radiator, engine, horsepower output, et cetera. And here is going to be our zero fuel flow. So when the engine's not running, it'll have the pump at 100, which in this case actually means the pump is off. Now you can do some pretty cool stuff with this column right here. Let's say you have a car that when you park it, you want it to cool down to a certain temperature. If you want the car to cool down to 180 degrees, you can make all these cells max speed. Even though the engine is off with no fuel flow, the pump will run at full speed until it reaches 180 degrees and then turn off. So that is your timer and your PWM setup. You don't need any input triggers. And in your pin map, it's going to be output as a simple PWM negative signal. And that's how to set up a CWA 400 water pump. Thanks for watching.